Holy son, how are you? How are you doing? All right, look at me, all technically wizardry is fabulous. Yo, wizardry, you, you've always been techni techn technically <laughs> wizardry, though, to be fair, haven't you? Look at me, I'm getting more like Santa Claus every day because I can't I go it's, Rob, it's like Robinson Crusoe on your little desert island there. Unbelievable. Seriously, unbelievable. Anyway. We're recording, um, by the way. We're recording. We're going now. Oh, we are okay. Fabulous. No, I just to warn you. There's no intro and all this. It's like, so, tell me about the beard. Tell me about that beard, because I must admit, when I've been watching you from afar, you, you're quite particular about you. You like your little facial hair now, don't you? Yeah, I do. Well, it's not me. It's my other half likes the facial oh. hair. Correct. Exactly. I'd have. Um, well, I'm fighting between two women actually. My mum says naturally, get that off. Yeah. And the other says oh i quite like it having said that it has gone properly like all over the top because i don't have anything at home i can shave it off with or anything in my hair and all that rubbish so yeah. just keep gelling it down and down and down and down <laughs> Hold, uh, uh, i did a thing with uh, razor Ruddock the other day and he goes what's what have you done to your hair I just got up but Beata has been doing a, a dog grooming course oh, and right. of course so so she goes you need your hair cut so she's had the dog clip <laughs> The dog clippers on me. Yeah. Help you, Rob. But mate, say it again. It wouldn't help you. No, exactly. No, no, no. Um, no. Okay. So, so how are you in the lockdown? Okay. Um, obviously, well, my other half is in Calgary, so I've been back. I got back a week before the lockdown, and she was meant to be coming with me, and obviously couldn't do that. So she's stuck in Calgary, which incidentally. Two days ago, it was like minus seven and it snowed. Oh my word. Proper snow, even yeah. in April. So uh, she wasn't best pleased with that, considering I was sitting in the garden as, as well, as you can imagine. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm on my own, but it's okay. I've done a little couple of bike rides, but um, I'm still flabbergasted at the amount of people that seem to be driving about all over the place. I just don't get it, you know. But nah. hey, listen, that's a government like thing with, you know, some, let, let's not get too political about it. But, yeah, I'm fine. I'm okay. I've got a little shop across the road. I go every four days and they're like, ah, where have you been? I'm like, self-isolating. What do you mean, where yeah. have I been? I get yeah. in and, like, give me some hand sanitizer. <laughs> I buy two pizzas and three vodkas, so it's, it's fine. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> listen, um, uh, were you always going to be a footballer with your dad, Jackie, Jakey, Jackie McAnally? Well, he was the famous one in the family. My father uh, won the league in 1964-65 with Kilmarnock when you know, Celtic and Rangers were so dominant way back in the day. Um, so winning that with Kilmarnock was a big deal. And kind of dad's always been... I mean, he's passed away now. But dad was always sort of um, uh, the sort of famous one. In Scotland, certainly. You know, it was, always used to be brilliant because Scottish people... When you're, when you're from Scotland and you leave Scotland and you do really well, they don't like it. They like it, but when you come back, you have to be reminded that you're Scottish and we're going to suppress you as much as we can. And people used to say, ah, oh, you'll never be as good as your father. And I thought, no, of course I won't be as good as my father, as my dad. And they thought they were being clever. And I was like, no, you're absolutely right. And they were a bit like, right, think of something else we can say to them to bring them down. And yeah, people, yeah. Wonder. But... Um, yeah, I kind of always was, I suppose, going to be a football player. It's just um, kind of the way it happened. It was quite hard on me when I was younger to make sure I was going to be a football player, instilling a kind of will to uh, to be bigger, better, stronger, faster, want it more than anybody else. And I, I suppose to this day, I'm still a very bad loser. Yeah, I have to join the club. Yeah, listen, can you sing as well as him? No. His was, uh, his favourite was, um, I left my heart in San Francisco. I played the guitar. I left my heart. Do you do that one? No, of course I'm not. I'm not singing. <laughs> You're only saying that because you and I go back so long. I used to sing constantly and just whatever else we were doing. My goodness. In San Francisco. When did you used to do, when did, when did you, was it, because uh, there wasn't any karaoke then. When was that sort of a, Family do's and parties and all that, was it? He used to do that. I'm in dad to the party every Saturday night in the house. Just about. I can only remember back in the day, all my aunties and uncles and friends of mum and dads, like almost every Saturday night they would have a yeah. party. Like, yeah. But they used to 
something like, well, we won't go to, mom, my mum's attitude was, right, we'll have it in our house, Jack, because that way we can check on the troops, and make sure they're not getting up to any nonsense. Yeah. Quite happy to have everybody coming, because my dad quite liked his, his house, and he didn't really want to go in. So they used, and I always yeah. remember the day, my brother and I giving it, you're having another party, another blues. <laughs> It, they seem to be so constant, yeah. you know. And it's, although people obviously have parties and, and have people around, it just doesn't seem to be as not relevant. That's the wrong word or prevalent. It just seems to be changed. Less. It's changed. Society's changed. Apart from now, when everybody's around the old Joanna, aren't they? Making it well. Of course, they're not everybody round, but everybody's making okay. their own entertainment. Unbelievable. And, and funnily enough, you're saying things will change. I think things will change forever now, Rob. I think there'll be so many things will change. I've got a pal of mine who's a policeman. And this is a serious point, actually. And it, 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 I spoke to him the other night. I said, how's things? How's, you know, the job? And, you know, the, can his, his wife is a, a nurse and stuff and blah, blah, blah. And he said, you know what's really amazing, Al? He said, the amount of 999 calls we're now getting and people wanting to go to A&E is almost nothing. So it's like, so yeah. hope in the future, they realise that you don't really need to be phoning because the cat's up a tree yeah. or... Yeah, you know, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Anyway, our 999s have not dropped, uh, sorry, not stopped, but dropped so dramatically that things have changed even for the police guys and now they're dealing with stuff they should be dealing with rather mm. than, you know, I've got my, my, my toe stuck in the tap and I need to get to... Yeah. It. I'm, not, I'm, I'm making fun of it. Oh, and I know what you mean. It made me think because everybody's that's stuck at home now and they've been told to help the NHS. So mm. now all of a sudden, Johnny, who's got the frying pan in his head, is, <laughs> is not going to be in any in it. And they are noticing such a difference to the hospital yeah. staff, apart from the fact they've got so much other things to deal with. Um, I've got to take you forward because there's, there's a certain amount of time on these Zoom calls. I want to just go straight to... To, to buy a Munich because I'm fascinated and we always we always you know we, we talk and we don't but I, I've never really what what was it like as a culture shock for um for a, a, a well you had gone to Aston Villa obviously but what well was it a culture shock going abroad because there's not many still now it's happening it's changing a little bit now but you know for so many years there weren't many uh, British guys who, who went abroad no, I suppose there wasn't many went abroad because they didn't fill the criteria that most of the foreign clubs wanted to end up. Bayern um, kind of had big strikers in their team for, for quite a long time, historically, even obviously prior to um, the likes of um, uh, Hunes and uh, not really Hunes, uh, his brother. Um, and... I, I suppose having done so well, I'm not, I, I must admit, Graham Taylor was brilliant for me, Aston Villa. He really yeah. was. Hard bomb, he was brilliant for me. But going there, I, I always remember one of the first times I was sitting in the, um, it was Jupp Heinkes, who was the coach at the time, with, with uh, Uli Hunes, who was the general manager. He was like the vice, the, the president. Yeah. And, uh, I'd be sitting in the room and they'd be talking about football. And they're speaking German and I'm, I can remember looking at the walls and the, pictures in the hotel or something, you know, and in these big fancy hotels where we used to stay, and I'd be like, I wonder how long that picture's been here for. <laughs> you know, the, the stupid things, because I was like, and then they'd be like, Alan, I'd be like, yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm standing that. Did you understand? I'm like, nope. But so, you know, <laughs> the, the, the board out, write a few things and all that. But this is English was like better than our English. Yeah. Proper. He was a businessman, spoke really good English, whereas um, Egon Cordes, who was the assistant manager, and Jupp Heinkes, his English was almost null and void. So Uli used to say to me, I'll speak to you in English, but you must speak to me back. You must answer me in German. And I was mm -hmm. like, right. Okay. And it kind of forced me into saying, I better get my finger out here, because Bavaria is not like the rest of Germany in terms of everybody speaks English. They speak Bayerish, which is a, a dialect of German anyway, so they think themselves even more remote from, from anything that, you know, would be the norm. And there's not as many people speak English as you think. Probably changed a little bit in Munich now, but certainly in 1989, it just wasn't like that. And the players were predominantly wanting to 
Bayern wanted to have them from Bavaria if possible. That wasn't always possible. There was a lot of them that spoke a real hard dialect. And that was hard enough to, to understand and remain speaking German. Where did you live? I lived in Trudery, which is in the east of the country. I used to, we used to train, I used to train every Sunday morning. It didn't really matter if, uh, if we'd stayed in Hamburg or Frankfurt or whatever. I used to train every Sunday. And I would come back. And my daughter, Victoria, was only a year and a half. And I would drive to Salzburg into Austria and have a coffee and a cake and a couple of beers and then drive back to Munich because Salzburg was only like 45 minutes for me. So I used to have a walk round after training on a Sunday. And Salzburg's beautiful. You got a chance to just, just gorgeous, you know, it really yeah. is. You know, Beethoven and all this kind of stuff, whatever it is, it's there. I can't remember his name. Beethoven Strauss or Lundvig or Swab. Julie there. Andrews. Julie Andrews is there probably. And, uh, and uh, it used to be unbelievable, you know, and it was kind of way before mobile phones and stuff. And I'd get back home and I'd speak to some of the lads and say, what did you do today? I said, I was training and I went to Salzburg with the light. But well, that, that, that's not in Germany. I went, no, it's, the Austrian border is just not that far from me. And the whole, so you're talking about a different culture, a different mm. mentality, seeing different things. You know, I lived in Birmingham, I lived in Litchfield, and you went through Tamworth, it's just not the same. The Did you work, uh, were you allowed a night out? Nah, not really. No, Get I didn't off. Like, Get I didn't, off. I didn't really like that. I can remember, I can remember Mihailovic and I went to this disco in, uh, in Leopoldstrasse, where Freddie Mercury and all that used to go. Freddie Mercury and all that mob. He lived in Munich for ages. Really? He used to love Munich, Freddie Mercury. And Mihailovic and I went to this club and we got back about, I don't know, say half one or something like that. It wasn't too late, a couple of beers. But we had, we'd, we'd been playing, um, um, I thought, I think, we played Dusseldorf and then we played Rotweiss Essen, Red White Essen, they're called. And Uli was in the lift with us and he, he said to me, he said, make that your last. And I was like, what are you talking about? He went, you were out Thursday night, you and Mihailovic, I know. I was like, my God, he really does know everything. He really does, you can't go. <laughs> he runs Munich. Yeah. So unless you were out with Augenthaler, who was the captain of the team and the king of Munich, then you couldn't really go anywhere. Plus, they drank these little schnapps things, Rob. You know, they would have a beer, like a stein, when you can drink a beer. And then they would have a yeah. couple of between. Honestly, you arrive at half seven, you were out of it by nine o'clock anyway. Seriously? Oh, these little Bernie, call them uh, villains. They used to be about that size. They used to get a perfectly shaped pear, no bigger than the end <laughs> of my finger, but it was a perfect little pear. And it would soak in the, <laughs> soak in the schnapps. You'd be <laughs> Drinking, I'd be like, I'll do some champagne for these things. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what is uh, the, the clashes in culture? What did you like about the German culture? Or, or, I mean, you obviously learn the language, you speak the language now, but, but what was it? Or, or did you enjoy it? Yeah, oh no, it was just amazing. There was a couple of moments where I thought, everywhere I'd gone from Air United to Celtic, from Celtic to Aston Villa. I coped with that easy. I was like, yeah, they're not better than me. I'm, I'm, and I'll get better. I hope I get better. Going to Munich a couple of times, yeah. I thought, no. Nah. This one, you're a bit too much off, big man, because these guys are good. These are World Cup winning football players. These mm -hmm. are, their attitude was different. They turned up to training on time. They turned up to training early. They turned up to training with their mats to do stretching and yoga before training. Just a different attitude completely. Um, and they expected to win. End up. Yeah. Expected to win. And when you didn't win, there was like, what you get in this country now? Okay, why not? Why this? Why another thing? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, I better get my finger out here or I'm going to be sitting in the stand for three years. Um, obviously, you had some great times there, but arguably the greatest moment of your career was winning the, uh, the footballers golfing classic in the manga <laughs> which is you know which which in fairness i'm not twice, twice. now because i'm not saying tiger woods at the masters last year was the greatest comeback in sports in history but i mean what tell tell everybody who maybe doesn't realize the the, the the magnitude of this this achievement yeah well i don't know about that but it's a it's a brilliant <laughs> anybody can pay to go on to to the actual trip 
You go as a free ball and then you get a celebrity golfer. <laughs> I've always been a golfer, always genuinely. And I'm touch wood quite lucky. I get to play with some pros and all that. And I, I get help and stuff. And I've been playing really well. Anyway, I, I won it one year and it was brilliant. And then I won it again and it was just fantastic, you know. And, but it's, it's a great... <laughs> Old guys get back together and have a few beers at night and stuff. And you know, basically, if you can stick your tea in the ground the following morning, you you haven't been out long enough. It's like kind of that, you know. If you win, yeah. great. If you don't, congratulations. It's a grueler. It's a marathon, mate. There's no question. I, <clears throat> I think that probably the uh, the German beer and uh, and my uh, practice of drinking it sort of put me in line to manage to win the footballers' classic. Considering you can have a jug full of one night and the following morning still hit the ball relatively straight. Yeah, but you, to be fair, that, you, I mean, you tried. You tried for a lot of years. You really wanted it. You were very, despite the all thing, the, you loved that, didn't you? Oh yeah, because it was. They were all depending who. They're all. I haven't said that. They're all playing off bandit handicaps. I'm playing off four and five, and I can't give any shots away. They're all playing off fourteen and fifteen shots. But uh, yeah, I tried for ages, and then once I won it, I was like, that. "Okay." Now I just say to Graham Sharp all the time, "You know something? You could be the best golfer never to win a green jacket at uh, <laughs> football classic." But it is a great week, and that, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've been really lucky. Uh, well, I, oh, lucky to the point of a, a bad knee injury finished my yes. career. I then had a knee replacement, so it's all metal, but I'm still able to golf. So listen. I'm pretty blessed with that, and I still enjoy it to this day, for sure. What? I, I, I've got to be honest with you. One of the things I can never, ever understand why you've not done is going for voiceovers, for, for you know, for, for whiskey and, and for the Scottish talk. Serious, I'm, I'm being serious. I, I was thinking about it before I came on. I, I, said, this to, I said this to you. I, I hesitate to say 15, 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. You'd make a fortune. You'd make a fortune. Well, my agent doesn't put me up for those kind of things, but certainly there's probably I sound more like Billy Connolly than Billy Connolly sounds like. You Billy do, no, yeah. exactly. So, um, if uh, if there is an agent out there and they think I can do voiceovers, then then by all means get in contact. I think you can. Listen, big man, thanks for joining us. We'll speak to you again <laughs> soon. Okay, you take care. Look after yourself, everybody. Thanks very much. Cheers, pal. 